What's up wonderful athletes? Thank you very much for clicking this video. You see, if we all loved and cared for our neighbors like we do for ourselves, then honesty and forgiveness wouldn't be a big deal for us all. You see here, we are dedicated towards spreading love to the whole world by reacting together, me and you, to different types of videos. All good vibes videos with the intentions of uniting all athletes. Wonderful soul, if you believe in love, kindly hit the like button and watch till the end. And tell us also where you're watching from, man. Straight out of Africa, I am Y311H, man, with lots of good vibes. Let's dive in. So I truly believe this is one of the most life-changing things a human being can realize. And it's the realization that most people view time in the wrong way. Most people view time as if the future is stretched out in front of you, the past is stretched out behind you, and you're the one moving through it. As if it's time is a fixed thing, and you are the one making your way towards the future. Now the issue with that is that you've most likely projected an image in your mind of your dream future, of everything that you want, of your dream money, your dream partner, your dream relationship, and you're trying to hurry there, away from the present moment, to get to that future. And the issue is, you can't do that because the future doesn't exist. You will never experience a future moment. You will never arrive at some future because you are always in the present moment. So this is why I often say you don't move through time, time moves through you because you're not going anywhere. You'll never not be here and now. And when you realize that, when you realize that time is actually moving through you, the future is making its way towards you, it stops the struggle, it stops the stress. You relax more deeply into the present moment, into being, and you simply begin doing, working in a state of presence, allowing the future that you wish to experience to come to you. Can you feel the stress that leaves itself from you when you realize that you don't actually have to hurry anywhere? Because you can't. It's impossible because you're not going anywhere. You are always here and now. This is the liberation of presence, of realizing that you are not going anywhere. You cannot escape the now. When you become more friendly towards the now, when you become more deeply rooted in the now, in the present moment, your entire energy field shifts to a higher level. The stress and the struggle begins to leave you and a more peaceful state of stillness enters into the background of your experience. And another way of saying that is your vibrational frequency raises to a higher level. And what you experience in this world is a reflection of your vibration. Everything is about vibration and frequency. So as you begin operating from presence, stopping the struggle, stopping the fight, and instead begin working more peacefully in the moment, doing things as they need to be done in the moment, your vibration raises and things of a higher vibration will begin to find you. Your external world is always a projection of your inner state. As you raise your vibration to a higher level, things of a higher vibration will begin to find you. Your entire life will begin to change. You can pursue your goals and begin building them, working on them presently and enjoying the journey. That's what it means to work from presence. Oh man, did you know that word of other things? Yo, look at this! It just won't stop. This is unbelievable. It just won't stop. How long did this take to carve out of rock with copper cheeses? 
Think about it, man. Music is allegedly over 5,000 years ago. Each doorway down there goes into some giant's rooms. And it's just crazy. One of the biggest mysteries of the world. How do you think those stuff were built by cavemen? Eh? Leave your comments, man. A husky was lost in Kamacha. They started looking for him using a drone and found him hanging out with his bear friends. Oh, and uh, this is good vibes, man. Oh, this husky had uh, definitely come across some good vibes friend out there in the woods, you see? And uh, they go out there and hang out with them and it's just good vibes, you see? This is nice, man. Wonderful drinks. People from different places and different beliefs can also hang out as one, well, you see? And just spread love and admire one another for their differences. And it's just good vibes. So oh, that way we can all stay in love and uh, just be happy, you see? These animals are very happy just uh, bonding, taking a walk together and it's good vibes, you see? Each one of them is killed in different uh, areas. But they are just happy to walk with one another, you see? Oh, this is nice, man. Good vibes, Adrings, thank you very much for watching up to this far, man. Kindly, watch till the end and help spread this love. And hit the like button, please, if you haven't, yes? Hmm. This is nice, man. Who people of Earth from where you come from? Have you ever seen a bear in a real life? Or come across one? You see myself, I only see them in videos here. And in magazines, I've never come across one. And I'd like to know how they look like and feel. Okay, guys, one more crazy eclipse video. This one's wild. It'll blow your mind and make you really realize that we do live in a simulation. So this whole universe is an informational construct and this eclipse is proving it. So check this out. So a lot of this data comes from my boy, Jason Bershears. He does an amazing job as a researcher breaking down simulation theory. And there's something called isometric projections, right? And isometric predictions, which basically shows that you know, time works like water in, in, in a lake. So say you have water in a lake and you drop a rock in it, right? That rock hitting the water is gonna cause a ripple. That ripple is gonna move out and each side, the left and the right, is gonna move out equidistant from the center. See what I'm saying? And then time works the same way. So in time, there's ripples. There's events that happen. These large events happen and it's like a rock dropping in the water. So when a large event happens, it's gonna make a ripple. And on the left and the right, equidistant, there's gonna be another event, right? So you basically have one event in the middle, and then you'll have a past time, and then a future time that are the same distance from the middle one, okay? Now, take the eclipse. So the last major eclipse like this we had in America was the Great American Eclipse of 2017. Now, if you take that date, and then you take this date coming up of April 8th, um, 2024, and you divide it, you take that many, you calculate how many days are in there. I'll put a graphic up, because I don't remember the dates off the top of my head, but, you, you take that many days and you divide it by two, okay? That gives you the center date. That center date is the rock that we dropped that caused the ripple. Now, how wild would it be <laughs> if that center date between the two eclipse dates, there happened to be a total solar eclipse in, in America? How crazy would that be? That would be a astronomical, almost a statistical impossibility, right? It actually is a statistical impossibility. We asked ChatGPT and they said they couldn't calculate it. So. That's exactly what happened. On that middle date, there was a total solar eclipse in South America. You gotta remember, America is connected to South America. I mean, this, this is in the Americas, it's not an island, right? So check this out, how crazy is it? So in 2017, there was a total solar eclipse. 2024, we have the total solar eclipse. That middle date between the two, exactly in the middle, there was a total solar eclipse, okay? Now, this is palindromic, meaning same on both sides. That's an isometric event. Now, when you have an isometric event like this, that means that these three events are completely linked. That means that you can figure out what's gonna happen on event number three, the one that's coming up on, on uh, April 8th, by looking at what happened on the first two. Because basically the way it works when it comes to isometric events like this is it's like a loop. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. In this case, actually, the, the middle is like the significant main event, and then the first part and the, the last part are kind of the beginning and the end, right? It creates a loop. So it's, there's some closure coming up with this event on April 8th, and you can figure out what's gonna be, what the closure is by looking at the patterns and the elements that are involved in the other two events, okay? Now, what happened when we looked at those dates? What was significant? So I only have a few minutes to do these TikTok videos. I really can't get into all the stuff. So I'm just gonna give you the most important, most significant part of it. And it was 
Okay, so there's that X. You've probably seen those maps that show the X marks the spot kind of a thing over America where, and I'll throw them up here, where, you know, you, you see where the two totalities from the last two um, North American eclipses create this like X, right? And one of the towns that's in this X is called Chesterfield, Missouri, right? What's significant about that town? It is where there is a significant Pfizer production facility. That Pfizer production facility is the one that rolled out the very first vaccines, right? Whenever they did the whole warp drive thing. Now, <laughs> this gets so crazy, I can't make this shit up. To make it even crazier, on the center date that that blot that bloop remember we dropped the rock in the in the water and it created the ripples on that center date when the total solar eclipse was in south america what happened on that date that date that facility started rolling out the vaccines that's when they actually started giving them to the like white house officials and stuff like that and then they started rolling them out to the public that happened on that date on that exact date of the total solar eclipse that's when they started doing the jabs okay now they started doing the jabs coming out of that Pfizer facility, which happens to be in Chesterfield, Missouri, which happens to be in the X of the two totalities, meaning that both of the solar eclipses went through that town, right? What are the odds of that? I mean, we already showed that the odds of there being a palindromic, um, this, this isometric event having the three different eclipses being exactly equidistant apart is a statistical impossibility which proves that we're in a simulation but then on top of that that date is when they started doing the jabs and the place where the jabs came from is in the x of this totality of the last two totalities in north america none of this i mean there are coincidences i guess um there are synchronicities but this is so precise and so exact it proves that we're in a simulation it proves that this is a virtual reality i've done many 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 videos on this it doesn't get any more black and white than this but when it comes to and i didn't just want to do this video to talk about that what you can do with this i, I actually wanted to introduce to you what isometric projections and predictions are because they're so cool because you can use it to predict markets and to predict upcoming events and and that kind of stuff not exactly, but you can use it to see trends and, and use it to kind of get a, a extrapolate out and try to figure out what's going to happen. And it's very accurate and it's very fun to do. So that's super cool. But then also, this eclipse is not just some random occurrence. I'm tired of people saying eclipses happen all the time, man. Well, back in like the olden days, <laughs> like a lot of ancient civilizations built a lot of their monolithic structures and a lot of their, their temples and all this stuff around eclipses. Like that was the centerpiece. That was like the main show like a lot of cultures basically worshipped eclipses and they used them for rituals they used them for all sorts of stuff they understood the importance of it these eclipses are not just random occurrences they are very precise and specific now when you get something like this that is a statistical impossibility that proves that this is not by chance this isn't just some random thing this is a very precise uh signal okay now it seems like with the pfizer connection that there's something's going to happen there. There's also a bunch of other connections with, you know, the New Madrid fault line. There was an X marks the spot type of a situation over in Turkey where they had two different totalities from two different total solar eclipses go through Turkey. And after the second one, right after it, they had that major earthquake. So that's a big deal. And you can't look past that because this X marks the spot in America is on that New Madrid fault line where it was the worst earthquake basically America's ever had happened there in the early 1800s right there. And um, it actually set off earthquakes in um, California too, but back in the early 1800s, barely anyone lived in California. So not only did it do a bunch of damage there in, in that whole area of New Madrid, but also in California, but no one lived out there, so it wasn't a big deal. But now <laughs> a few people live out there. So I won't get into all that, but that's something to look at because, or pay attention to, because <sighs> I mean, come on, you know, that's not a conspiracy. I mean, that's just looking at data. Um, so anyways, there is a connection there and there is also a connection with the isometric prediction predictions because you had to look at other things that happened on those dates in 2017 and 2020 of the last two total um, eclipses and there was other things that happened having to do having to do with ha hackers and cyber attacks and having to do with you know uh, financial markets and and also the presidency it's whenever they um you know said joe biden won the the you know the electoral college and they you know confirm that he was president and that kind of stuff so there's a lot of things that happen on those dates that were very very significant but the pfizer thing is hard to overlook and look past because of how many significant events and how just 
black and white they were. I mean, the fact that on that date is when they actually started doing the jabs and that the jabs came from this facility that happens to be in both totalities in that X, which is just such a, a very, very precise thing. So what does this mean? Well, normally on the opposite, on the this side of the isometric predictions where basically you have had event one, event two, and now you're at event three, it's the closure of the loop. It's, it's the, the ending of the cycle. So what I think will happen, and I don't know, I don't want to make any speculations, but something that could happen is some sort of an event having to do with the vax. Now, I don't necessarily think that everyone that got jabbed is going to turn into a zombie and that kind of stuff, even though The Simpsons did show some weird stuff having to do with zombies coming out of a comet during an eclipse. Go look it up. It's crazy. But I think it's going to be more so like the like some sort of a revelation or some sort of information is going to come out having to do with maybe the people behind the jab that's going to lead to some sort of justice being served in some way, shape, or form. That seems to, to fit the pattern of what I'm seeing. So that's what I would be looking at. Something significant happening there that people will just chalk up to, oh, that's random, you know, but I don't think it's random. This is all connected. So anyways, how wild is that? We do live in an informational cosmos. This is a virtual reality, but isn't it a fun one? Let me know what you guys think about all this. Have a beautiful day. Peace. Hello, man. That's some uh, crazy belief there. What do you think about I it? I want to start this video off by saying reptilian lives matter. I'm O negative. You can't hate me because you made me. We blood. Come on, fam. Don't take my video down. I have to speak very saucily on this subject because my video was taken down. I won the appeal. And then last night, they took it down again for this reason. The way that the reptilians shapeshift is not actually shapeshifting. They are blasting a frequency on your visual cortex to give the illusion that they are human. And the bells were used to disrupt this frequency. You can look at this video clip here from Spider-Man. And here's a clip from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Shapeshifters don't actually shapeshift. They project a frequency onto your visual cortex to give the illusion that they are human. The frequency from the bells disrupts the frequency placed upon your visual cortex. This is why whoever it was that took the bells, took the bells. Without any bells interrupting the frequency that they have placed on our visual cortex, they are allowed to walk among us rent free doing as they please. This is the reason why whoever took the bells away, took them away, because they are in bed with the reptilian shapeshifters. This is true cloaking technology, where you cloak everyone's visual cortex versus cloaking the individual itself. So if anyone has a bell plug, let me know down in the comments. It's time to wake everyone up for real. Peace and love, y'all. Yeah. Oh man, hey, that's good webs guy has some new information. Here's a hypothetical. The Earth ascends, it moves into fourth. A uh, percentage of the population goes with it. And the rest, in order for them to survive in their physicality and continue on their, their spiritual uh, awakening, in order to survive, they're put on starships, okay? And they're taken to another place where they can continue their physical journey. Well, they're changed forever being put on board a starship, okay? They're now different. They're now tweaked. Okay, but they still have the journey of the inside, of searching themselves, developing their own soul, and living life from a place of heart, as opposed to a place of ego. And, you know, and that's the key here, is living from a place of heart, being of service to each other, as opposed to being of service to self. And a lot of people that are in that ego space are of service to self because they're they're that's that they're they're hooked into I have to be great, I have to do this, I need to accumulate all this wealth when it really means nothing. You can't take any of it with you, you know. And and I, I'm going to go back to something that Viseus once said to me, um, you know, that the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry lifetime after lifetime. 
that's what it's all about. That truly is what's it, what it's all about. Your, your journey, what you went through, you are totally of service to everyone. And it's obvious that you truly care about humanity and your loved ones. Dude, you're, you're so on the path. I don't think you could leave the path now, even if you wanted to, because you're there. You understand on a core level what this is all about. Whether you believe in aliens or not, you're of service to others. That's everything. That's everything, because your intention is to help others. And yeah. intention, intention is what source always looks at. That, what yeah. about go ahead, Laura? Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna. I didn't mean to interrupt when you. Were, I was just adding to the question, and I mean, I, I, I was just gonna say that even if a person does this, I, I think we repeat things as long as we're dependent on an inverted system, and that dependency bond is still alive. We need to cut through that, and that is the soul journey. But if that person who's in fear still holds love, doesn't fall into the divide and conquer, is just trying to navigate the madness and is just being duped. I mean, I, I think that's a lot different than a person that is going into, like you said, service to self. I'm right, you're wrong. Therefore, the love breaks down. And so I just wanted to add that. But what were you going to say, David? What about psychopaths? What about sociopaths? I've had friends that I would probably put in that category and I can't figure out, is that a genetic thing? Is that a soul thing? Why are they so service to self that they'll hurt others and and find complete, uh, you know, to them, it's completely normal. It's not even, they, they, they don't even feel they did anything wrong. They were owed that, you know? Like, so what about these type of people that operate in that system of not only service to self, but I'm going to take whatever I want from you and it's, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. It's not even, it's, it's, it's almost like, like an, an entitlement of a narcissistic entitlement that I've never seen before. I know people like this and I've always wondered, is this a genetic thing? Like where, what is, where does their soul go? If they, if they can't help it from, from right when they get out of the gate, let's say they're born that way. I mean, can we fault them for it? I mean, what, what is, where do these people go? I don't know. I'm not God. I have no idea. No. I will tell you that some of them have attachments, spiritual demonic attachments. I believe and in that, that. That's actually who's running the show for the most part. And they're just, can I just, body can everything. I just say, I've had friends around me that I could see their attachments. There you go. I could see them and, uh, and they're dead now. <laughs> yes, they are. And I, eventually, I, 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 eventually the demonic will kill the host. It's parasitic. Yeah. Yeah, I could whenever they were around me, I could tell whatever was attached to them wanted to attach to me. Yeah. But that physical being who allowed that demonic energy in has to sort of unwind from the karmic retribution. That's why the deep state wants people to do their dirty work so they escape. You know, that's why they trick us out of our own free will and use mind control because we create the mess that they encourage us to create. And that sort of relieves them a bit, would you say? <laughs> Well, they're doing anything they can to absolve themselves of any karma, <laughs> you know? but you can't, but you really, you can't, you, know? you can't it's game the system. It's a so you can't game the system. Source is not fooled. Right. You know, um, but you know, why does someone go so far into the dark that they completely deny the light when the light is everywhere around them? I simply don't have an answer for that. So what about I'm able to figure it out? So what about the karmic law, the karma laws that they go by in sense of they have to show you before they do it, like so that they, the karma doesn't come back to them, uh, whether they show it in commercials or movies or whatever, they have to show you an event before they do it. So it's kind of like telegraphing before they do it. Um, what about that? Is it do they do they actually have loopholes for the system? No, no, I let let's. You know, and I've heard that the Simpsons predicting things and so on and so forth. Um, is that really telling us what they're going to do? No, because not everybody watches the Simpsons. They don't get off the hook with that. That just gives them more justification to do what they really want to do. For example, COVID-19. Let's talk about the, can we do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. This is going on Rumble and on my back channel. Okay, okay. Well, I didn't know. 
So, um, cause I got kicked off the mail because of this. Yeah. Um, this, let's look at the vaccine, the M mRNA. Okay. They didn't tell everybody what it was. They didn't tell everybody what it was going to do. You know, they didn't tell anybody anything. They absolutely bullshit everyone and put them in a fear space that you're only, you're going to die unless you get this. When in fact, this is a contributing factor to an early death. So they knew exactly what they were going to do. Does that absolve them of that? Saying, you know, we, we've created this virus and you're going to die from it unless you take this thing that we've created for you. <laughs> you know, this is going to change your, your anatomy. No, that's... We get back to the psychopaths. You know, they, had a, they made a decision that they were going to remove 90% of the world's population between now and 2030, 2050. That was their decision. They told us in the 90s that that's what they were going to do. 94 at the UN, Agenda 21. That's what they told us. Well, they told each other, okay? Did every country's government tell everybody else, hey, you've got between now and 2050 and you're done? Did they? No, they did not. No. Um, you see, this is, this is what's interesting. This takes us in another direction and I'll do this just for a minute. This is where you had two different breakaway societies. You had Safari, the agency, deep state space fleet. And then you had Solar Warden, which was run by the United States Navy. They went out and then they were pushed back into our solar system because other benevolent races says, wait a minute, you, you can't do this. What makes you think that you can betray your own people and we're going to let you come out here and colonize? This is not what you do. This is not behavior we would ever tolerate. So everybody had to come back. And mm. the only thing that we know about Space Force and our space fleet and, and the Alliance is because Solar Warden is sharing information with Space Fleet. End of story, period. And they had to be separate. They had to be a completely separate entity with people that they knew they could trust, the best of the best of the best. And that's where we're at. And that's where the disclosure is coming from. Yeah. Because we need to realize that all of us, on some level, belong to a bigger family. We, we're, we've we never been alone. Yeah. They only convinced us we were alone. And if anybody we saw was different, we treated them as if they were an outsider. For example, when someone comes out of the dark night of the soul, they're a different person. And the people you used to know would move away from you and say, you know, dude, you're not right. When in fact, you're 100% right. You are 100% intact. They're the ones who aren't right. But they're not going to... Yo, man, that's uh, new stuff, good people of art. Then there's this. Look at this man. Some weird type of creature there. That is uh, flying. Oh my god, this is crazy man. What do you call that? Oh uh, man, crazy stuff this so one. What do you think this is? It looks like a dinosaur, doesn't it? How about dinosaur? this one? Bird or dinosaur? This one looks like a bird. It's just one problem. Those two drawings are based on the same skeleton. Just posed differently. One pose makes it look more like a dinosaur. The other pose makes it more like a bird. See, we have to be careful with drawings because they can be used to make an animal look like a dinosaur or look like a bird or even look like a missing link. <laughs> Man, good people of Earth, thank you very much for watching up to this far. You guys do believe in dinosaurs or such kind of stuff. Do you think there was a time those creatures used to exist here on Earth? But maybe they are still there where the ones that don't know. Good people of Earth. If you know of one dinosaur from where you come from, tell us in the comment section there, you see? We would also like to know how they look like, how they behave, such type of stuff. And those videos that has passed, why don't you leave your comments good soon and hit the like button. Tell us where you are watching from also, you see? And spread love to those around you, see? That way we can impact the whole love with good, the whole world with good vibes. Respect to yourself, man. And to all those that have clicked in for the first time, and watched up to this far with respect to yourself. That gesture enough deserves blessings and uh, 
lots of love man you see may good vibes come your way so till next round man stick around because some fire episode will be coming soon bye bye good vibes to you we are out man peace and love be with you man oh by the way big up to those guys in the comment section at minimalist man ah how are you doing how is everything from where you are hey josie i hope everything is cool man how are you doing is everything okay Ah, Christy Hachi. Ah, how are you, man? Oh, you are loved from wherever you are. Same to with JST Stone at above average Joe. See, those are regulars. Some people that never ever forget to leave comments. And it's very encouraging and motivating. You see, good vibes to you, man. To everybody. Even to at George Jr. Ah, all those guys. At the only Jedi. Big up to yourself, man. And everybody that have not had your name, you all have been respected. We don't have a list soon, you just stick around. We might hear your name, man. You see? Big up to you. Bye-bye. I love you.